Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Europa Universalis 4 as we are playing with Great Britain. Hope you guys had an excellent weekend. I know it's this will be Tuesday's video. I'm recording it on Monday though. It's just going to be a... Yeah, I, I don't think I'd be able to put this out before the end of the day. So, so yeah, this will be Tuesday's video. Uh, my weekend was all right. We had uh, the Eagles one. So that's always great. That's my team, if you didn't know. Uh, so very pleased about the Eagles winning. Uh, I did hurt my foot this weekend, though, guys. That sucked. Uh, so I've been walking around with a, uh, a busted foot all weekend. Luckily, it's not anything, like, really bad. It's not broken or anything like that. But it uh, hurts like a motherfucker. Just doing something stupid, of course. Because how else would you ever hurt your foot? Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys had a, a good weekend. Uh, so I'm turning off all of our forts, guys, because we're no longer in a conflict where I'm worried about anybody invading us. Uh, and we're also moving our army here uh, back to uh, our territory, our fort over here in the West March. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Richard Salisbury over here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and... Let me just see here. Uh, well, actually, we're going to get rid of Hastings, in fact. Uh, so the way we'll do this, who has Hastings in their army right here? Uh, we'll go ahead and give Salisbury to this army. And then we're going to have to get rid, because we have far too many generals, guys. We're going to have to get rid of Hastings. Uh, I know that siege is awesome, guys. I am respecting the siege points. Uh, but he doesn't really have anything else when you compare him to Salisbury. It wouldn't make any sense to get rid of Salisbury. Now, Robert Napier has the least amount of uh, pips here overall. However, his pips are a bit more useful than Hastings' pips, even with that four siege. So that's why we're going to get rid of him. Uh, and now that that's done, we're still going to be over our military leaders when we hire ourselves uh, a, uh, uh, a conquistador. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, we're going to hire a conquistador, but let's go and get an army going first. Uh, just a small army of dudes. Uh, probably about... Probably no cav... Uh, yeah, I don't... Well, maybe we'll bring two cavalry. Yeah, okay, we'll bring two cav. Uh, with like three infantry is what I'm thinking, or four infantry. 6,000... Let's do, I think 5,000 should be enough for what I want to do here. Uh, so let's just do one, two, three, and then the two cavalry units. Just in case we do run into anything, they'll make short work of it. Uh, having cavalry in America uh, is usually pretty helpful since a lot of the natives, they don't, they don't get any uh, cavalry units. So, or at least not this, uh, not until later in the tech tree. Okay, so uh, we have that going. Once we get those units finished up, We'll then uh, get ourselves the Conquistador through our mission. Remember, guys, we have a mission that's going to give us a very good Conquistador. Uh, and we also need to deal with this here. Uh, so it seemed that most people felt that we needed to use our navy. Uh, that's where the Brits. That's our job. Uh, we, need to, we need to destroy these guys. So one of the propositions was for us to, to get a few galleys. Uh, just build a few galleys and then put them into the navy and then... Hopefully they would get sunk. At the very least, they would get the uh, bonus here for being in an inland sea. Uh, so let's let's take a look how long it would take to build a galley. Because I don't actually know. It's a long time. We're not going to wait for that. Yeah, this, that's almost a year. So we're not going to wait for a galley. We're just going to throw them out there. The, the bummer is that we don't have a leader. Uh, so I'm really hoping that that doesn't penalize us too much. But let's go ahead and send our fleet over there. It's going to take them a, a while to get there. Although it seems that we're a little bit damaged. We, we're going to want all of... Uh, the full health that we can get. There we go. We'll just wait for... There we go. Just wait for June, and then we'll send them on over here, and we'll see if we can't get a big naval battle going. Uh, we'll have to watch that one. Unhappiness among the peasantry. All right, well, we rule as we see fit, is the way I look at this shit. It does suck, though, because that's negative one stability. God damn it. I didn't want to spend any stability. Oh! Fuck you. I'm not even going to increase that right now, guys. Uh, I feel like... I think we're better off right now waiting. Uh, I know stability has some negatives, but it's alright, guys. We're just going to wait for a little while before we do anything with that. So our fleet's heading over there now. Uh, and I want to say that there is something else I need to take care of, but I've forgotten already, so it's irrelevant. Uh, let's go ahead and bring our infantry over here. We get our, Actually, we'll bring them into a central location so that their cavalry can move right over there once we get them. Do need to watch the fleet. They're pretty fast, so it shouldn't take them too long to get there. They actually might be damaged by the time they get there, because it looks like we are taking attrition. Well, that's a goddamn shame. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see how bad it is. Whoa. Okay, hold up. Uh, Milanese Conquest of Dalmatia. Um, it looks like the war is over. Somebody get pieced out? 
Yeah, I don't know what happened. I wasn't really paying attention. Oh, okay, these guys got pieced out. Got it. All right, so we are in the battle. And it looks like we have one. It was really, really quick, guys. So uh, that was just those eight uh, ships, though. Uh, the other 30 have decided to stay in fleet. And, of course, the Milanese fleet has uh, come out. So this should allow them to... Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to keep our fleet here. I guess we'll see. It looks like they're not taking any attrition in this particular location, which is... Not sure why, though. Uh, yeah, I think they are going to take some attrition there. We can't leave them there for long, essentially. That's what that means. Else they'll die from attrition. Um, but what we can do is try and stay there long enough so that their army can get there, and they're just not going. Damn it, I didn't put an army in place to do it myself. Because there's 20,000 men there. Well, that's a goddamn shame, and Milan's not moving. Am I going to have to do all of the work for them? Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, Lord, are you kidding me? Yeah, I think we're going to have to move our own army over there. Well, isn't that a damn shame? All right. Well, we're going to move the one with the best drill. And do we want Salisbury? Yeah, we'll bring Salisbury there. And it's just it's a shame I'm the one that has to do this. Uh, you would think that the, uh, Milan would do that as soon as we opened it up for them. But they have not. Yeah, they're just standing there. All right. Well, that's a shame. Uh, they're making me do everything. All right. So these guys are done with their exploration mission that we handed them. So let's go ahead and uh, send them out to do another mission. Uh, we're going to continue exploring uh, here in the Indian Ocean. Let's go with the Western Indian Ocean first. So he's going to go ahead and take care of that. I'm sure our army over here is now done, so let's go ahead and get them all moving over here. And once they get here, we'll give them their conquistador. It's taking them, I guess I... We wanted, I made that uh, go a little bit too slow. All right, here we go. Let's go and merge these guys, and let's give them their conquistador, passing the, the mission that we have here to settle in America. All right, so loud music going by my window here. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. Uh, there's always people coming by whenever I'm recording. Uh, so we got ourselves our conquistador, who is really, really good. I almost want to use him for, for our main leader, because he's so damn good. Uh, but we'll to use him for his job. Because I did want to explore that territory, and this is a free conquistador, so it's useful. Uh, what sucks, though, is we can't actually send them. I didn't realize that. We can't send them to the fucking fleets over here. Oh, Lord. <laughs> We're trying to overstretch our fleet, guys. So hopefully he doesn't die before I get him over to America. I could just send the transports over there and just leave these ships here. That'd make us kind of vulnerable, though, because remember, they do have a very large fleet here. And I don't know that Milan would support me. Uh, let's just wait get our army over here. Um, why is he considered an exile? Oh, he's gone through their territory, got it. He should lose that, right, when he comes to Milanese territory? Apparently not. <sighs> yeah, he's not going to be able to attack if he's considered uh, an exile. Damn it. Hmm. Probably because he went through territory that was not... But you'd think that once we went to Milan, we'd no longer be an exile. Do we have to return to our own territory? Yeah, that's a shame. Well, hopefully he'll do it if I go over there, maybe? <sighs> yeah. And there's no way for us to cross into France. We'd have to, like, use our army. We'd have to bring our army back to our land and then bring the ships. Although this is becoming a massive pain in the ass, guys. Yeah, we can go over here, but it won't engage us in battle because we can't be in battle. But that did force the Milanese to finally fight. So the whole overall... Uh, plan worked out and we didn't actually have to fight so that's good. Let's go and move our army back now uh, It's just a shame that that happened that way That's not the way I wanted it to happen, but the point is is that we have one here. We're gonna go ahead and allow any further troops to cross uh, So we need to keep our fleet here. There we go. All right, so that's enough. Let's go ahead and get these guys Coming back home. It's gonna take them a little while. Uh, they took a little bit of attrition, but it's not too bad Actually, I don't think that any of this was from attrition. Uh, I think this was from the battle actually a truce with France has expired, uh, and it looks like with that, with the seizing of Venice, uh, we have now finished the war. Uh, the total casualties for their side was 73,000, total for our side was 45,000, we lost 10,000, uh, while Milan lost 26,000, uh, Venice themselves lost 13. Where, so where were the majority of these casualties? The Papal States. The Papal States lost quite hard on this one. Okay, uh, what did they get out of this? Looks like we got 23 ducats, got some prestige, and uh, Milan's going to get war reparations. 
Uh, we did get favors with Milan, though, because of that. So, overall, I guess it was somewhat helpful. I don't know if it was worth all the effort we put forth. Probably not. Uh, it looks like we have a new ideal we can invest in, which will, is what we were saving in, saving on, excuse me. Because remember, we're going to be getting, what, like five modifiers? Global trade power. State maintenance, that's two. Uh, naval leader maneuver and blockade efficiency, that's four. And then we get our British traditions, the Navy tradition, which is five. So that's excellent. There we go. All right, so I think that this is going to be worth it. Oh, and plus, it unlocked new policies. I didn't even think about that fact. Uh, is that it unlocked the new policies? Let's go and take a look at what we could get in policies. Uh, we could get this Diplo one, because remember, we have one free policy uh, for each group. And then all further ones would then cost us power each uh, month. So we currently have the superior supply system, which is the manpower recovery speed and land attrition. Far better than just getting that land leader fire. Uh, though that would be much, uh, probably superior later on in the game. I don't know. Land leader fire, having more fire could be useful. Uh, but we have one Diplo spot open and only one choice. So let's go ahead and place that here. This is global settler increase. Plus native uprising chance. The native uprising chance is useless to us. In fact, with getting this policy, we might actually want to change. Because I believe this will make it so that there's no way that they can rebel on us right now. So uh, we don't really need to have native coexistence policy. We could go to na uh, native trading policy to get the assimilation up higher. I think that's exactly what we're going to do, guys. So I think we'll be at fi we'll be at we'll have two fifty percent modifiers which is the same thing as having 100%. So let's get this. We'll get higher native assimilation. Yeah, we'll do that. And it lowers your stability by one. Never mind, we're not going for that. I did not realize that it lowered your stability. So it's not really an option at the moment. Uh, seems that we have uh, Protestants uh, here have taken over just about everything there. I don't know if that's going to force them to be, yep, force them to be Protestant. So now, if you look here, Ireland is mostly Protestant now. Interesting. Yeah, look at this. And all France is, is Protestant. Catholicism is not doing well. Interestingly enough, they are strong in Scandinavia for the most part. Um, and yeah, we no longer get those be benefits that we were getting because France is... Uh, yeah, we no longer have the truce with them and all those benefits that we got from it. Uh, but yeah, Germany's pretty pretty Protestant. Even, even here in Italy, of all places, there is a very strong uh, Reformed religion presence. Uh, the squills, the skills, the quills, <laughs> the skills of the Queen Consort. Uh, so this is going to give us administrative technology cost reduction. Well, that's nice because we're actually going to get that soon. That's what we're saving up for right now. Uh, we're saving up for a lot of things. Uh, so we still need to repair ships. They took some damage on the way over here from attrition. Uh, so let's get them. Are they repaired now? No, we still have quite a few of them. Uh, some of them took a lot of damage. All right, it looks like we actually seized some ships. Interestingly enough, we got two light ships that we took in that battle that we won. So let's just go ahead and... Oh, we have ships we can upgrade. Well, whoa, wait a minute, let me not do that yet. I think it's actually one of these trade ships that we would be upgrading. Uh, so let's go ahead and detach these. Yes, it is one of those trade ships. Uh, go ahead and upgrade the ships. Uh, we'll just wait to, to move them over there to the other trade fleet here in a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and move these guys. Oh, wait, no, 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 that's right. We're letting them repair. My bad. Oh, Lord. We just ended a allied war, and now we're being called into another war. This is going to be a war with France. Okay, maybe we can benefit from this one then. All right, so what we need to do is let's go and get our forts all going again before, before we actually go to war. I don't think France is going to have much of a military, honestly. Probably not. Uh, if I had to guess, with that rebellion they just had, they probably have no soldiers. So let's go ahead and get these forts uh, going again. We're going to want... Actually, these guys are no longer drilling. We're going to want to stop them from drilling. And we're probably going to let a month tick by so that the forts will get some troops. Uh, is there anything else that we want to do? I think we're currently... Ooh, what's happening here? Internal conflicts. Uh, disaster could come up at any chance because, or any time, because of us having the lower stability. Alright, we're getting plus two each month because of our lowest stability. And then our less religious unity is putting one up. Okay, so that's one from each of those. Got it. Shouldn't be a problem. We want to take stability up here. Just a bummer. Uh, I didn't want to have to do that. Uh, so, 
let's join the oh yes that's right we're waiting till july and then we're going to join our allies war i don't know what this is over okay they're trying to take that province okay so we have joined the conflict we'll help them out and in fact i'm going to go take that province from them so that they can't have it because i'm going to be a dick like that um yeah they're not going to get the province and then we'll go ahead and take this one as well and does he have a leader? He does. He has Robert Napier. Got it. Uh, so he'll go take this fortification. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we are currently uh, wanting or interested in all of these provinces. All these French provinces say that I want possession of all these. Why can I not say that I'm interested in those? Hmm. I don't know why I won't let me say I'm interested in those. All right. Well, whatever. I'm interested in that one. And I guess that's it. Although, if we haven't marked all Ireland, looks like we have. All right, good to go. Uh, and this one should be marked as well. Yeah, we want that one. All right, so hopefully uh, we'll get some of these these provinces in this peace treaty. And you can see that there are some troops here. We'll get some of them destroyed. I don't know where their army is, uh, but they are not taking that province. So if I can take that, I'm not going to give them possession, which means they won't be able to take it. And it's going to be very frustrating and irritating for them. Uh, but it's... It's worth it. I don't actually want them expanding into France. Like, this is my territory. I have claimed all of it for myself. Uh, Milan is really expanding. We've helped them get a lot more powerful. Uh, and we have occupied this province here, so let's go ahead and move along and occupy the next one. There's no forts here to flip these over. So we'll go ahead and occupy all of them. Well, this army here takes that fortification. Uh, this army will then come over here and take the fort uh, there. And that's our basic plan, and I'm sure these guys are done repairing, uh, not these ones, but this one here. So we can go ahead and send them. Uh, let's get them going over there now. Uh, we wasted so much time on this, unfortunately. Uh, it's not the way I wanted to do it, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and send him right here. Automatically transport him. And there we go. Get that taken care of. So the other question I'd ask you guys, besides that nibble battle, is what we should do over here. And a lot of people don't know how the mechanic works, and they have the Count's Feud in Denmark. A lot of people didn't know how the trade uh, the trade companies worked as uh, so they weren't sure how to advise here. Well, the trade companies, uh, they essentially you trade, uh, I'm trying to see if we have a province here anywhere. I think these are provinces here. Uh, so you trade your tax and production revenue, which we're not getting a lot of that right now because these are territories rather than states. Uh, you trade that revenue that you get from that for more trade power. Uh, so it helps you push trade further along, hence why it's a trade company. Another benefit to trade companies, which is why I wasn't sure if we did do a trade company here, is if you get the trade company large enough, then you'll get a free merchant. Uh, so you usually want to uh, do trade companies in places where you can build it up large enough. Now, I don't know. Let me just see here. Uh, let me just see if... Uh... Yeah, this is all one trade region. So we could not create a strong trade empire so one of the things that was suggested is that we only turn this one into a trade and then keep uh south africa as a uh like a imperial imperial states uh but we wouldn't be able to do that uh because we wouldn't be able to create a very good trade empire here it'd only be two provinces so i don't want to do that and if we're not going to do it in the south then we probably shouldn't do it anywhere i don't know we'll wait guys uh we'll wait to do anything there uh, as far as turning into states and all that kind of stuff, all these are still colonies, so it's irrelevant. We don't have to make that option right now. Uh, but I'm not going to turn this into a trade company. I don't think it would be beneficial. Uh, so, tariffs on fur. Let's do... I kind of want to tax it. Yeah, let's tax it. Ten power is really not that much. And who knows how much that tariff value could end up being in the long run. Because I think you get that for five years or something like that. Maybe I'm making that up, but it's somewhere around there. <laughs> All right, so we have another mission fulfilled. Interesting, which one is this? We have completed the mission settled in America. Great, been on, okay, so this will give us a global tariffs and native assimilation. Well, it's tempting to do this now, but it might be wiser to wait because tariff values are kind of low right now. Uh, we're not making a ton from tariffs. So if we waited, it could be way more beneficial uh, you also get one plus merchant from the the large uh, colonial nations as well. Uh, so yeah, I don't think it would be beneficial. Like yeah, that's just not a significant amount of money. Uh, it's not even one ducat is what we'd get from it. So I say let's wait until that tariff, that 25% tariff we're talking about, that being like 10 ducats or something like that. You know what I mean? 
let's wait until our tariff uh, income gets a little bit higher. I think it'd be smart. You got to use those missions uh, strategically. That's the word I'm looking for. Salisbury has died. Well, that's a shame. I forgot that we were taking stuff over. I forgot we were in a war with France, actually. <laughs> I was over here talking. Uh, we had a fort going. You know, we're trying to take a fort, but this guy was doing nothing. Uh, where is the NO, the ones who started this damn war? Who are we at war at? Did they, like, go after somebody else? And just taking a look at the war, it's really just Siena. I guess they could be over there. I don't really know. Uh, who else is out in this war against France? Okay, just pretty much our stuff. Okay. Yeah, I don't know where Eno is. But whatever. Uh, you know what? We're actually going to take this one first. Let's get that fortification taken. Then we'll take the rest of this. Uh, these guys can now move over to... Which fort do they? That one right there. Get all these forts snatched up. And then when the war's over, we should be able to get something for our help. Uh, and the exploration is finished there. We got delayed salaries. Uh, damn. This is such a shitty event, man. And you just get them. Like, why, why are salaries delayed? Nobody knows. I mean, I guess we could be uh, raising war taxes so we're not losing as much money here because we're losing a ton of money. But the point is, his army maintenance is all the way up. So how are how'd they get delayed? Maybe I should have read that. I don't know. Uh, the point is that I don't like those random events. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, so army maintenance is still costing us a considerable amount. We're right now kind of hurting our money. I think colonial maintenance is kicking our ass. Uh, so hopefully we can get that one flipped over soon. And exploration finished. Well, I should have sent them on another one, my bad. Uh, but I th think I know where they're at. So let's go ahead and send them over to... Oh, Western Indian Ocean Coast is a possibility. Or let's just do the sea zones, because remember we're trying to... Yeah, let's just do the sea zones. Because we want to circumnavigate the globe. So after we do that mission, we might... Go ahead and do the uh, circumnavigation. I don't know. We'll see you guys. We'll see how it goes. Our fleet. Where are they at? Are they still over here? All right, we did get our troop over here. Uh, excellent. Let's go ahead and start sending them to explore. Uh, and we're going to send our fleet back home, though we do need to let them repair, so we'll let them do that real quick. Just for maybe a... Yeah, just maybe a couple months. Let them repair, because they do take damage going across here. There are There is attrition going across the ocean here. So it's something to consider. Uh, so, we're about to take, uh, or about to move into this province. I don't know what this grants, like exploring this. I know exploring the naval ones gives you uh, naval tradition. But I don't know if this gives you land tradition. I want to say it does. Uh, the siege is over, so let's go head back over there. And this is how things can get kind of crazy in the game. Is because you're, you're fighting on multiple continents, or doing stuff on multiple continents. And you can see how it can be a little bit difficult to... To control it all because it is such a large game kind of like hearts of iron you know hearts of iron also has a world map and uh not all paradox games do of course we got crusader kings that does not have the world map though they have enlarged the map through the uh multiple patches all right so these guys should have explored something else let's go over here so we can find i do want to come all the way down here uh, if possible we'll try and explore as much as we can while we have this conquistador i don't know that we'll hire another one and we do have something else occupied, so let's go and take care of that. Uh, these guys are probably going to try and take Barry for themselves. Oh, I don't think that's pronounced Barry. I think somebody corrected me last time. Okay, I want to get that one, honestly. Ah, they're starting to fan out. Uh, leave units, places. I don't think we're going to get there first. Oh, maybe we did. All right, excellent. That's the one I want. You guys can take that one, whatever. I highly doubt they'll uh, actually keep it. And the peasants are getting uppity. Good God. Peasants? Know your place. All right, so let's go ahead and, and increase our stability because this is getting higher and higher, guys. So this is not good. We don't want to have to deal with that. So let's go ahead and boost that. It just sucks that I have to spend the admin power on that. That is not what I wanted to spend my ad admin power on, guys. Not at all. Okay, so about to get that fort. These guys have taken this. Let's go and take some more provinces here. And I'm just hoping that our ally will give us something... Just give me something, man, uh, from all this territory that we're helping them take. I'd be really irritated if I got nothing from it. Okay, so we have uncovered that. Can't actually move into that territory because there's a, uh, a tribe there. So we can't go into their territory. 
Uh, we'll go ahead and slowly march down here and cover more territory. Uh, one of the colonies has become self-sustaining. That is excellent uh, because we we're it was really costing us an arm and a leg paying for all that colonial maintenance. Uh, so that's really, really good. And just taking a look at the trade power here. And we're not really bringing any, any money over this way because we don't have any trade power downstream. Uh, so we're not getting anything. But eventually this is going to become a very, very profitable trade here. You can already see that down here in the Ivory Coast has become quite profitable. 5.22 going over here towards, what's this, Sevilla? Yeah, it's going towards Sevilla. Which, there's no way for us to get that Sevilla trade. Uh, I, I believe there is a way to get the, yeah. You don't have to go through, hmm. I, I could have swore there's a way that you don't have to go through Sevilla. I think it's right here, actually. I think the Ivory Coast is the way to avoid having to go through Sevilla, you can you can switch the trade to go over to one of these two nodes here. Uh, so we really need more trade power here, honestly. So maybe it would be beneficial to do a trade company there. Uh, the only reason why I didn't want to do that is just because we only have two provinces. However, there's this African country here, the Congo, that is occupying plenty of good trade territory. So maybe we want to... Uh, to get some of that. There's also the options of colonizing here, although this is this is all jungle, so it's not all that good. I'd prefer to colonize to take this territory right here. Just these two provinces is what I'm looking at. Maybe we'll attack then. Send some troops and attack the uh, uh, the tribes here. Uh, the Congo. I think they're tribal. Oh, they're a kingdom. All right, my bad. Excuse me. He's a king. I called him a tribe. It's pretty disrespectful. So we have taken more stuff over here. Let's go ahead and take something else. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab that. Oops, thought I had them selected. Let's go and grab that province. It's taking forever to take that, that fort because we don't have anybody, uh, any fleets there right now. Speaking of the fleet, I wanted to mothball these guys. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we can try and save some money because we're, oh, we are broke. Good God, we're broke. Um, so uh, the Netherlands has declared independence from Austria. Oh, that's awesome. I always like that event when that happens. Although they're not going to be very strong because as you can see, all the Netherlands is already dominated by free countries right now but there is events that can fire that ends up unifying all of this here so we'll see if it fires i would not be shocked if holland joins the netherlands robot might they might be too big and then uh, i never knew how to pronounce that uterect or something like that probably butchering that but i believe that they'll probably join so we'll have to see what happens in the netherlands we'll see what events fire uh, so let's go and get oh damn let's get this guy moving uh, over here just uncover that and then we'll move over there and got more to tobacco in Bermuda. New Haven is producing fish. Okay, and the Treaty of uh, Tordesilla. So the Treaty of Tordesilla is clear that the Pope's no are infallible. Uh, so this really only affects Catholics for the most part. And it makes it so I, th I think you still can colonize anything uh, that the Pope has designated to be uh, Portugal's or I think it only, I think they only give stuff to Portugal and Castile. I could be wrong though. I, th I believe you can still colonize the stuff there if you're a Catholic, but I think you get penalties. Uh, the Treaty of Tordesilla in real life was... Uh, why did we not uncover... Oh, okay. Here we go. I'm about to uncover that now. Uh, but yeah, the Treaty in real life uh, pretty much declared that everything was Spain's uh, at a certain uh, latitude line. Or, excuse me, it was a longitude line. Uh, and I think the longitude line was like... I don't remember the number, but it's somewhere like right here something like that. I knew it cut Brazil in, down down the middle, essentially. Uh, and uh, you can easily look it up, so I'm sure somebody in the comments is going to let us know here uh, what the exact longitude was for the Treaty of uh, Tordesilla. Uh, but essentially, it declared that everything uh, west of that was Spain's and that nobody else could colonize there. And of course, Portugal took advantage of that to then colonize uh, Brazil, since it was east of that line. Uh, so, interesting history there. Of course, it's, uh, the uh, Spanish had the Pope in their pocket. And so we actually were able to go into that tribe's lands. Okay, just disrespecting their hunting grounds. Uh, we did take this fortification, finally. It took long enough. So I'm going to grab some more provinces. In fact, if he's already... Let's see if he decides to stay there or not. Yeah, he's going to come on over here. So we'll grab that province up. I'm just going to grab all these provinces. Grab as many as we can. So we can get the uh, participation right in this war. Uh, the Congolese slave trade. Alright, so the King of Congo has contacted us and offered our traders in Luanda, Luanda a monopoly on the slave trade in his lands. 
In return for trading directly with him rather than any of the local chiefs that has applied us so far, he offers us a guarantee of steady and growing supply along with his protection. Well, it was an attack, the King of Congo, but maybe not. Let's take a look. So our arrangements with the locals are working fine. This will get us prestige. Uh, or we can say this will be a deal. And it sounds like a deal. And they'll get the Slaver King event. And then we're going to get 2 plus production in one of our uh, provinces. And we're going to get local trade power and institution spread. And slaves will now be produced in Luanda. Well, let's take a look at what's in Luanda now. It's one of our provinces uh, here. We currently have Tropical Wood. Hmm... Tropical wood can get, uh, does get more profitable later on. Slaves are pretty useful too, and we don't have those yet. So, only in, only in a Paradox game would you be talking about slaves being useful. Uh, <laughs> but we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. Uh, because, uh, we need the, uh, the slavery here for all of our tobacco colonies in the Americas. It's absolutely terrible. It's... It's interesting how Paradox has decided to deal with these events with the way they've done things in the past uh, where they tended to kind of, I don't know, maybe change history to kind of forgo some of the ugliness of it, uh, to ignore it, uh, which some people agree with that, others do not. Whether you do or not, Paradox has in the past decided to do that. Uh, that's kind of been something we've seen them do a lot of. Um, hmm. See, that's total trade will go up to 1.48. Yeah, it looks like it, it would be beneficial to us to do it that way. Let's, let's send them over there. We'll just get a big trade fleet in, in Lubbock because it's worth so much. But when it comes to the, the slavery, Paradox has not really done anything to change that, interestingly enough. Um, yeah, they actually have pretty much kept it in the game and continue to represent it. Uh, and I know that Paradox, you know, they're in Sweden, so they're very, very left-leaning uh, country overall. And I think that's that's true of the company paradox as well. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting because the left has decided that, or that's the way it seems to me that that it is worthy of changing, uh, that we should be changing uh, history. That it's okay to kind of like change history, you know, to fit modern modern principles. Uh, me personally, I think we have to remember history. We need to study it and remember the even the ugliness of it, the horrors of it. Because uh, I think it's they serve as good lessons. Uh, now we control one of these provinces. Uh, let's go and bring our troops back, because I think all of France has been conquered. Yes, it has. I was going to bring these guys back. Uh, in fact, after we get our men back, we'll probably stop paying for them as well. Though that could cause problems with these guys, actually. It might. All right, so these guys are done. We have finished here. Uh, but yeah, I'm all for, like, I think we need to remember history. Now, I don't support... The ideal that because something is history, because something is tradition or something, uh, uh, that it's infallible, uh, that we can't, or that we can't question uh, how we're representing something. Uh, for instance, and let me just, should we spend that? We got a lot of stuff happening here. We got a government reform, so I'll continue what I'm saying here in a second. First, let's get our government reform. Uh, so this is absolutism or constitutionalism. I know we're England. So it would make sense to do regional representation, but that is not that beneficial to us, honestly. Uh, I tend to turn everything into states. I don't really like the way the states and territory systems done. I don't think you should be able to treat some land you took in China or India as the same land as your homeland, <laughs> and with all the same benefits and penalties, like you're gonna be able to get the same amount of trade, uh, taxes, and production income from your provinces in India as you would, or your provinces in Africa or wherever you know, somewhere not in Europe, that you would uh, in London, you know. I just don't think a government could could really do that. It doesn't make any sense. I hate the way they did the state system. It's terrible. Uh, but it is the way it is, and let's take advantage of it, because it's far better to just use states. Uh, so we're going to get that even though... I, and, you know, the idea that we have to be uh, constitutional. I don't agree with just because we're England and we kind of want to role play a little bit, because the Tudors were uh, very good examples of... Uh, some of the earliest absolute monarchs, they didn't have absolute power. They, of course, did have to deal with Parliament, uh, especially to get money. Uh, but eh, when you compare them to the this, uh, st following Stuarts, the, the Tudors had a lot of control over their country. It is amazing what they were able to accomplish. 
uh, especially Henry VIII and what he did, uh, yeah, they were kind of absolutists in a way. Uh, not truly in the sense of what we see in the 17th century, but they were quite, quite powerful. Uh, so I was talking about the, uh, the symbols and stuff. Uh, for instance, I do not support the ideal of uh, the South here in America, that they should be allowed to portray the rebel flag. Now, given I'm a northerner, uh, so for me that's a rebel flag, and they're over here just flaunting this fucking rebel flag. Uh, yeah, I don't think they should be allowed to do that. I'm all against that. Like, that's not just because of... It's, for me, it's not about racism or anything like that. Uh, it, for me, it's about the fact that this is a rebel flag, and it's not patriotic in my eyes to be uh, throwing that around. Now, given this is, as I said, this is the, uh, the view of a northerner, uh, so southerners probably don't agree with that assessment. For me, I don't think that... I think it's, it's tre treachery in my eyes. Um, they all talk about how patriotic they are, and yet they, here they are with a, a rebel flag, an un-American flag, uh, and they call that patriotic. Nope. So the war is over, we got favors from it, and they gave us a core province from it, because they weren't able to get anything. <laughs> that's awesome. It looks like they're going to cede all of this to us. I actually didn't want all that, so that's kind of a negative, um, because I think we just got a ton. Yeah, I think we're going to end up having a bunch of... Oh, Lord. I probably should have gave some of it to N.O. <laughs> because there wasn't anything they could take for themselves. So instead they gave land to us. And that has probably increased our our uh, uh, God, our AE, our aggressive expansion, to dangerous levels. Uh, so, yeah. This is probably going to be quite bad. We also have Rebel Uprising. In fact, we should probably go ahead and put that army maintenance right back up where it was at. Because... We're gonna have some issues with some rebels, I already know. Um, if we can only core some lands, but I was, I was really wanting to get the next technology, guys, but I just don't think, we only need 487. All right, guys, we're gonna wait to get the 487 before we core anything else. This is just, we're doing a bit too much, I think. Uh, that we're gonna have problems with this. Uh, as far as the, uh, making this into a state, uh, I mean, if we're going to, well, I guess we don't have really that much control of it. Oh, look at this. Trade company investments. So this is all a new thing. I don't actually know anything about this. The whole trade company. You need to have a trade company with a province. Huh. Well, this is... Yeah, I heard about their adding this. Uh, all these little uh, buildings and stuff that you can get for trade companies. I had forgotten about it, though. So that might be one reason why we should get trade companies down there. Because I'm sure those buildings will provide a much bigger benefit than what was like, what you got from trade companies before they added that. Looks like nobody has decided to join the Netherlands. They stand alone, and they're at war with Austria, who they rebelled from. They're probably going to lose and get conquered, uh, I would assume. Uh, France is now this little snaky territory here. Uh, not much left to them. We did fulfill a mission. I think that's this one. Yeah, that's still the same one we looked at before. Uh, and, yeah, just, just problems, guys. Lots of problems right now. Uh, we've got looming disasters. I thought we had increased our stability so we could avoid that. Apparently, that is not the case. Uh, yeah, we still have the issue. However, it's only increasing by plus one now. Uh, if we get religious unity up, what do we need to convert in order to do that? Looks like that province right there is the only one. Yes. Okay. Uh, our corruption is growing, but we're broke, so I don't even know how we're going to deal with this. Yeah, we might just have to let it grow. Yeah, I don't see how we're going to do this. I mean, we'll pay for what we can. But right now, we're... We're broke, uh, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to uh, to spend all our money uh, trying to reduce corruption so that we go broke. But one thing I did notice here, actually in the beginning of the video, and I forgot to mention it, is that we have Russia now. Russia has formed. Very interesting. Uh, we now have the, the Russian state, and, and things are really starting to consolidate. Countries are, as you guys can see. Uh, Teutonic Order is looking quite mighty. Interesting. I'm surprised they didn't become Prussia yet. Uh, they're still a... Uh, no, well, actually, never mind. They're a duchy. That doesn't make any damn sense. How are they going to be a monarchy and be the Teutonic Order? Yeah, I thought they became Prussia uh, when they became... Yeah. Hmm. All right, that's interesting. All right, so we're going to go ahead and end the episode here. We did carry on a little bit longer. I think I had stopped playing the game about five minutes ago. Uh, but I hope you did enjoy the episode. If you did, make sure you leave that like, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and thanks for watching, guys.